What's up everybody, Raimi here, otherwise known as Dr. Ray, and today we're talking about using AI for academic writing. Um, it's a big, huge topic of discussion in academic forums, professor forums, student writing forums, writing forums. What we're gonna talk about today is A, I wanna talk about some of the tools that are out there that people are using that I personally have been using. I wanna talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, you know, why it's good, what, how can it, how is it helpful? How is it not helpful? What are the bad things to watch out for? And then I wanna talk about like that, like fine line of like plagiarism versus not plagiarism and the gray area. And like, what are we accepting as faculty and professors from students? And what are like, how can we use this in like academic journals? And like, where is that gray area? And what is like good versus bad of like, plagiarizing plagiarism because it's kind of questionable right now and we're going to talk about that so first of all when we talk about ai for writing there's tons of tools most of you have heard of chat gpt and google bard they're kind of like the two big ai tools right now um, but there are tons of other tools out there that are we're using for writing and they're much better than those two tools and even if they're using like the api of those two tools like they're still better but obviously chat gpt and google bard you can ask it to do all kinds of stuff i can say write me a paper on whatever and it's going to go write that paper right and we're going to talk about whether that's good or bad and stuff and plagiarism and all that stuff but it, it does that so i can enter a paragraph in and say you know check this for grammar that kind of stuff. change the wording in this to make it sound more formal informal all that good stuff so we can use it for all kinds of stuff but is it good is it bad and what are some good and bad things Besides ChatGPT, though, and Google Bar, there are tools like Pro Writing Aid, Grammarly, which y'all probably heard of, Microsoft Word even has some, tools the students are using like Quillbot, and the list goes on of AI writing tools out there. Some are free, some are paid, some have free and paid versions, very similar like apps on the phone. Like there's free and paid versions and stuff. Most schools, most all, if you're writing for academics, you're gonna have an access to Microsoft Word. They have their editor. Um, most of you who are in academics in higher ed will have access. Your school probably purchases like tools like Grammarly, so you have access to that. I know we do at my school. Um, and then there are other tools you can buy as well. So let's talk about like the good. What does this stuff do that's good? And I wanna, I'm gonna open up just a couple pieces of software to kind of show you like all the stuff that this like does do because it can be like really cool and, and help you with your writing. So like, I wanna show you some of that cool stuff. Um, so some of the good. It does a great job of summarizing and paraphrasing, which I'll show you an example of that, but it does a great job of summarizing and paraphrasing. Um, does great jobs of grammar checks, like really does a great job of checking grammar. Um, Especially like, it's not like I have a publisher when I'm writing like a journal article that I send it to and they like check it for grammar for me. Like the publisher is just like, the editor just like, they, they're looking for like sources and stuff. They're not checking my paper for grammar. So having grammar checks, um, it's great. These tools are great for generating ideas. These tools are great for creating outlines. These, these tools are great for writing. They're good to tell me how good I'm writing. Let me show you an example of that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna open up Pro Writing Aid because I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like because I think it's one of the most, I think it's one of the better tools out there and it does so many different things that I think it's so helpful when writing. So I'm pulling up Microsoft Word and I pulled up Pro Writing Aid. Um, you can see I've got Grammarly, Quillbot, Pro Writing Aid. Um, I'm just gonna show you this one tool just because I, just want to show you a few of the types of things that it does do. So I asked ChatGPT to write an article about why I am the coolest person in the world, which I agree with the article. It's actually a very good paragraph by ChatGPT. Good job, ChatGPT. Um, but you can see the types of things that these software are doing. Like it can check for plagiarism, which is super cool. Um, it can check for like senses, like to see like if I'm, you know, show versus tell, like what am I trying to do when I'm writing this? I can check for pacing. I can check things like style, like I can click the style box 
and it tells me like, oh, I found two hidden verbs, no passive adverbs, um, no repeated sentence starts, like using the word like I four times in a row, that kind of thing. Um, no emotional tells, like, you know, it's, it's checking for fiction right now. I can set it for what I want it to, uh, what I want it to go for in the settings right here. Um, I have it set for creative, but I can set it for academic, which I will just do. So when I click on these, it'll start looking. I can check for things like consistency. I mean, this is pretty cool. It checks for like, are quotation marks used consistently? Are my periods used in the right place? Like all that good stuff, like pretty cool stuff. I can check like alliterations, my pronouns, cliches, sticky sentences. Like that's, that's nice that it checks for sticky sentences. I can check it for readability, which is pretty cool. Like there's one, it's only one paragraph. This paragraph is very difficult to read. Um, it gives me a grade level of 15 points. Wow, that's really high. You know, we know what our audience is that we're writing for. It gives us like that grade level, what we're shooting for. Um, tells us how long it takes to read it. Like this is very useful information. And it does other things like looking for echoes, like how many times are you rewriting, like using the same word over and over again, like that kinds of things. It has a thesaurus, um, a grammar and style. And then it gives us a big summary, which is actually really cool, which goes through and it will compare us to other authors. Just goes through and just gives you tons and tons of information, which some of it's extremely useful and some of it's not. And all these tools give you that kind of thing. Grammarly has its own version. I click open Grammarly and it goes through and it's gonna check it for grammar and stuff. Um, so there are all kinds of really good reasons why every human being writing should be using tools like this. There are reasons why every human, it doesn't matter if you're an academic or whatever, are students, they all should be using these tools to help them fix some of this basic stuff. Like this is really useful. You can actually learn to write well by using this tool and saying, oh yeah, I shouldn't be doing that. It keeps telling me that over and over. And all of a sudden I'm learning like not to do that anymore. And there are, there are other things that these tools do like in pro writing aid, I can click on a sentence right here. Like, hold on, let me, I click on a sentence and I can say rephrase and it'll rephrase my sentence for me. It'll give me like multiple ways to, to write my sentence. Like that's pretty cool. Like it just changes a couple words. That's so different than like what Grammarly does too, especially with Grammarly Go, but I can make it like more fluent, more formal, more sensory, like more descriptive. I can shorten it, expand it. Like it does some cool stuff. I mean, that's, that's neat. Like that's, that's cool stuff. Like that, that's super, I mean, when you're writing and you're like, oh, I got to rewrite this sentence and you're just sitting there, like this will just, I can keep clicking rephrase and like, going through and giving me options for different ways to reword my sentence like 10 like that's good stuff that's good ways to help us writing but then we get into the bad stuff which yeah these things do some bad stuff so like bad stuff they make stuff up sometimes um it it makes stuff up and what's the problem with that the problem with that is that if you don't if you're not an, a subject matter expert or knowledgeable enough to know that it's making stuff up, you're going to use it, which is a huge pro very problematic for like students using it to write, like, especially if they're using chat GPT and they tell it to write something like it'll make stuff up. Um, I've seen like lots of very well known, like very publicized. The, one of the bigger ones was lawyers using chat GPT to help them write their legal briefing. And it was making up court cases, like citing court cases that did not exist. That's very problematic. So like there are some really bad things this stuff does. It doesn't always write well. Like when I was showing you those paraphrase options in pro writing, some of those options were terrible. Same thing with like Grammarly, like when it's checking my grammar, like I've never just said accept all Grammarly errors. Like I probably accept like 60% of them because the other 40% like don't make sense for my paper. Like it doesn't know, it's not perfect. So like it doesn't, always do a good job. The, the problem, the main problem with this stuff is you have to know enough to know when it's wrong, which is problematic for students, which is problematic for new writers. Um, while it's helpful in some ways for them, and I think they should be using it, they really need to learn how to do stuff correctly so that they can recognize when it's wrong. Um, it doesn't always sound natural. Sometimes it sounds like I've tried to ask ChatGPT to do different things and like it, it's, 
sounds weird. Like, it's not right. Like, it's like even like this paragraph it wrote about me. Like, let me pull it up again. Like, it wrote Dr. Ray Best, or like it wrote my name. It wrote Dr. and PhD for some reason. Like, it just does some weird stuff sometimes. Like, that's, I don't know. That's, that's a little, a little weird. So another problem is it can be bias. It, so, so let me give you an example of that. And it's very problematic. If I've asked ChatGPT, like, what are the top 10 rock albums of all time? And then I'll ask it like another day, like what are the top 10 rock albums of other t of all time? And it'll give me a different list. So like it, and those are like these opinionated questions. You start to magnify that. It just gets more and more problematic. Um, and that's when it also starts to give me different information. Like when I ask it a factual question and I ask it three times and it gives me three different answers. Sometimes it gives me all the same. Sometimes it gives me three different. And so there's like these problematic problems. And then we get into the big, big, ginormous problem with AI writing is when is it plagiarism? Plagiarism. And when is it bad? And when should or should we not do it? Because that's really the big, like, what if and when question, right? Now, obviously, if you're a student and you're watching this, if your professor says no AI and you use AI in any way, you're plagiarized. Like, you don't do it. Like, but we need to be more specific and we need to tell students what it is and what is allowed and what is not. Same thing for us, like our academic journals need to do that too. I'm gonna give you some very like basic guidelines that I, I am personally following where I think not plagiarism versus plagiarism, like what is the line? So I think that, for example, when I pull up Pro Writing Aid and I look at its suggestions and I'm having it, looking at it for spelling, I'm looking at it for grammar, um, I'm looking at my style, I'm using Grammarly, and it's going through and giving me grammar and spell checks. Even when I click a button here and I click rephrase and it gives me some different options for my sentence, I'm trying to rewrite my sentence to sound better. I think we're okay. We're safe. We're not plagiarizing anything right now. Um, we are... We're writing, we're thinking, we're brainstorming. If I ask ChatGPT to give me a, a, an outline of a, of a paper and then I go ahead and write the paper, I think we're okay there. Where we start to get in the problems is when we go into tools like this tool doesn't even do it, you know, Quillbot doesn't do it, Grammarly doesn't do it, but ChatGPT does. When I say, write me a paragraph on, you know, George Washington becoming the first president. All of a sudden we plagiarized when it is writing for me. If I don't write myself, if I were to take this paragraph and put it, I mean, ChatGPT wrote this paragraph, but if I wrote this paragraph and put it in, I said like, make this paragraph sound more formal. We're starting to get into plagiarism because it's, it's just writing for me. I'm not like picking, I'm not like taking a sentence I wrote and saying like, you know, I think this rephrasing starts to get into, okay, like I want this sentence to sound more formal, give me some options. You know, it changes some words here and there, but it's not rewriting for me. It's, just, it's doing what Grammarly has always done. If I go in here and I say change this whole paragraph in ChatGPT, I think we're, we're at like that gray line. And if I go in and just say, write me something, obviously we're at this, <laughs> you're, you're, you're having it right for you. That's that's 100% uh, plagiarism. I had saw someone ask in Reddit the other day. They said, I had ChatGPT write it for me, but then I, 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 after they wrote it, I rewrote it myself based on what they wrote. And I was like, nope. That's, that, we're starting at the wrong place. You write yourself. You maybe have them help you with the outline. You have ChatGPT or these tools give you ideas. You have them help with your writing. Like, I don't like this one sentence. What are some options for it? I can just look at rephrases. It's cool. I can look at my sticky sentences and change them. I can look for consistency. Um, Quillbot basically is very similar to Pro Writing Aid. We're okay. So it's a matter of how do we use this. So asking it to help me is one thing. Asking it to write for me, we've crossed, I mean, it's really that simple. If it is writing for you, if I say to ChatGPT, I need a sentence that does the following, and it writes me that sentence, that is plagiarism. If I write a sentence and I say to this, hey, I need to make this sound 
this sentence sound um, more descriptive? What are some options? All of a sudden, we're using a tool to help us write better. If I say write a sentence for me that's more descriptive, all of a sudden it's writing for you. So there's there's a, a kind of a clear line, but there is some gray area. Like how much is okay? You know, is spell like we get to this point where people are like no AI. Well, no AI means like no AI means spell check. No AI means Grammarly's AI. Like Microsoft spell check and grammar check. Uh, editor review editor spelling and grammar is ai so like the people saying no ai i don't think understand what ai is like there's levels and we have to know the difference between writing ourselves and someone else writing for us if if we're getting something that an editor wouldn't suggest an editor wouldn't write for us i mean it's basically that, that that's a good like example right there like editor versus no editor if I write, submit a book to an editor and they're reviewing it for grammar, they're going to make suggestions on sentences. They're going to tell me to write this sentence a little different like this. Add these words in this sentence. That's, those are, that's good feedback. Like what would your advisor versus student, like me as an advisor reading my student's paper when I tell them to make changes. That's the difference. That's what we want this software to do. Be that advisor, be that editor. We don't want it to be the writer. That's really what it, what it comes down to. That's the, the big, big, big difference. Um, so, yeah, those are some of the tools out there right now that people are using. Um, I showed you an example of Pro Writing Aid, which I think is one of the better ones. And there is a free version, and pay, that is the paid version I have. But the, I think the free version does everything, just not like you can only use so many words and stuff. Um, I've talked about the good things this stuff does right now. I've talked about the bad things this stuff does right now. I think you should be using it to help you write better. I think every time we write something as an academic right now, we should be running it through a tool like Pro Writing Aid or Grammarly for grammar, spelling, just checking little things before we send it off. Um, I think it'll help us improve our writing a bit. So, And that fine line between plagiarism and not if it's writing for you it's plagiarism if it's not a suggestion like an editor would make or an advisor would make it's plagiarism because it's doing something for you don't trust it don't trust these tools that's the biggest problem is learning when they're wrong and being able to make those changes all right y'all later everybody